Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Matt Miranda, the County 4-H agent here in Guadalupe County. Uh, and today, um, if you're not able to come to our meeting tonight, we're having a meeting uh, here at the County Extension Office that is about uh, basic elements of photography. So we're, it's the first photography project meeting of the year. And we're going to talk a lot about um, the categories that are in the contest, the, some different composition types and elements. Um, and the main reason for this is because last year for the county contest, we had a lot of questions when the judges put descriptive comments about different types of composition in photography. We had a lot of kids uh, and adult leaders that didn't quite understand what some of those meant. So we're going to try to cover some of those today. Um, and hopefully answer a few questions that you may have about this project. If for some reason we don't touch on one of them that you had a comment on from last year, please contact, contact me at the Extension Office and let me know and I can get that to you. So today we're going to cover three basic uh, things. We're going to talk about basic photo composition and lighting. We're going to talk about uh, digital photo quality and then uh, choosing the category that's right for your photo. And this is not a list of all of the um, photography category entries. Uh, we'll do another training on that as it gets closer to time. But this will touch on some of the, uh, the questions or the, the categories that I get the most questions on. So for basic photo composition, it's actually very easy uh, to take a photo. Anybody can do it, and you can do it on just about anything now. You can do it on a phone, a camera, your computer, everything. Uh, and it's, it's as simple as just clicking the button and taking a picture. Uh, but good photos for a contest take skills um, that it takes time to master. The very first photography contest I entered as a 4-H'er, um, I entered a, a, tree, a picture of a tree hanging off of a cliff and it was an ugly photo it did not do well but it was something I really liked uh, over time I learned how to take those things that I liked that I wanted to take pictures of and how to frame it or set it up in a way that a judge might say wow that's a pretty good photo uh, so we're going to talk about some basic rules of composition today including the rule of thirds uh, leading lines and framing uh, balancing out different elements, uh, symmetry and patterns, which we also call in 4-H elements of design, viewpoints, depth of field, and more. The rule of thirds, this is probably the one I got the most questions on at the, from the photography contest this last year. Um, and it's probably one of the more basic photo tricks you can use to take pictures. Uh, with, with this technique, you, you in your mind, you divide your photograph into nine equal parts, into nine squares. Um, and the focal points, or the part that draws your eye in the photo, uh, should be where those lines intersect. So the subject of your photo um, should have to be near or um, at the, one of these four focal points. And I'll show you in the next photo. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly on one of those uh, intersections, but it should be uh, very close to that to take advantage of the rule of thirds. Now in these photos you see two different, uh, or the same photo from two different perspectives. Um, and what this is, is as you can see the photo on the left, the subject, which is that rock, is centered in the middle of the photo. Uh, on the right hand photo, the subject, which is the rock, is centered along one of these little uh, lines right here, along one of these little intersections. Your eye is drawn to those po four points on the photo. It's something that the human eye does. Uh, so when we say we're looking for something with the rule of thirds, um, we're looking for something that fits into one of those areas. Um, this is a, a pretty simple rule that you can follow. Uh, a lot of times be, when we start out in 4-H photography, this is the first rule that we learn um, because it's easy to set up. But there's some other things that you can do with the rule of thirds to add to it and give your uh, photo a more uh, creative quality as well. Um, the next one is uh, leading lines. And as you can see, this photo also takes advantage of the rule of thirds since the uh, subject, which is the railroad track, kind of hits along the two of those focal points. 
Uh, but leading lines are any kind of line in the photo that guides your eye to a particular point in a photograph. So as you can see, the railroad tracks here lead you deeper into the photograph. It takes your eyes from something that may not seem interesting at first to the real focal point of the photo. So if you look up here uh, towards the bottom of the photo, you see just plain railroad track. And the further those tracks take you into the photo, you notice that the real subject of this photo is probably the bridge. That's probably what the photographer was looking to take the picture of. But that those lines help lead you into it. And there's a lot of different ways. We have natural uh, lines in nature. Uh, we also have uh, lines that are created from um, human elements. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. Uh, framing is another uh, good way to make your subject a little bit more interesting. Uh, the framing technique is a way of using natural and man-made frames to surround uh, the subject of your photo. So it kind of puts your whatever your subject is into the spotlight. Um, that's kind of why we have picture frames is because we, we want to focus on whoever's in that photograph. So this, in, in the picture on the left, you see the boys framed by the... Um, the, the hub of, of, the t of the large tire and the photo on the right you see that the capitol building of whatever state that is, I don't really know um, is kind of framed, oh, I guess it'd be uh, Missouri it, framed by the St. Louis Arch um, at least I think that's what that arch is <laughs> so uh, you can use framing maybe you could use framing to frame a plant uh, one of the frames you might be able to use are some branches from a tree uh, or maybe you can frame a, the, a photo of a sailboat or uh, some other kind of b um, boat or lighthouse or something with hills around uh, the subject. It's completely up to you and, and whatever it catches your eye. Um, balancing elements. Uh, so sometimes Placing your subject on the rule of thirds creates a dead space, okay? Especially if you are taking a photo where you have one subject, there's no background. Um, and this dead space can kind of make the photo seem a little bit boring. So you can use another, less important object to fill that space if needed. Um, and I'll, on the next slide I'll show you that, uh, what, what I'm talking about. Whatever you choose as your background um, in the photo though, make sure it does not overpower your main subject. If you want your main subject to be um, the flower in the front of the photograph, but the mountains in the back of the photograph are much more interesting and maybe a little bit clearer and in focus, you've just uh, defeated the purpose of your own photo. So this would be a way to um, balance things out. Let me show you what I mean. So in this photo, uh, the photographer wanted to focus on the sign at the front right hand side of the photo. Um, but if you had just taken that photo like that, all you would have seen was blue all the way around it. It might have seemed a little uh, desolate or um, boring. So in the left side of the photo you see the old building and it kind of gives something for your eye to block out while looking at the, the main subject and that's part of the part of what we're looking for here is to have something to where there's not as much dead space but it also draws your eye more to the main subject. Uh, symmetry and patterns are another thing that we use in, in photography um, and we could also call this elements of design. In the 4-H photography contest one of the, the the categories is called elements of design and this is a, another way of putting that. Um, there's a lot of both natural and man-made patterns on earth. Uh, so you might see the patterns that are created by the wind in the sand dunes of Africa or just on the sand dunes down at the coast um, and then you might see patterns in how a, a window cell is laid out um, in a house. Uh, different patterns occur in different areas and they can be very eye-catching. Uh, but you can also, instead of just focusing on some of those patterns and, and symmetry, you can also use a different subject to break the pattern. So let's say you see a, a checkerboard type wall, uh, and that would be an example of a pattern, a man-made pattern to take a photo of, but you could break that up with a person standing in front of that wall. Um, and it's a nice background to have 
and it helps you to focus on the main subject, which would be the person in that case. Basically, it adds a focal point to your photo. So as you can see, there's two photos here. Uh, the photo on the left is a, a photo of Texas A&M uh, San Antonio, and you can see that they it's a very symmetrical campus. It's pretty much the same on both sides of that main road and you can see the pattern that's laid out in the uh, the steps and the concrete and kind of the focal point there in the middle of the the circles where everything kind of leads to. Uh, on the right hand side you see a pattern that is formed by a seashell and uh, that's a, a, just a one example of the many many patterns that take place naturally uh, in nature and, and on the earth. Um, when you're looking at different things and you're looking for subjects of photos to take, try to focus in on this and see what patterns you can find when you're getting ready to take your photos for the contest. Another thing that we look at is uh, viewpoints. It's very easy to take a photo of something um, from directly in front of it. Uh, just standing in, I could take a picture of the county extension office here uh, from the very front of it and uh, it might not be the most interesting or maybe I'm not going to be able to get all of my subject in at once. Um, one of the things that I've been doing in my travels around the state is I've been taking pictures of uh, county courthouses, historic courthouses, uh, which is fine, well and good if you can get the whole courthouse in the picture. If you can't, you can consider different viewpoints and angles, um, different heights. You could take a photo from far off, you could take a photo from uh, very low to the ground, and, and different um, aspects of the same subject to where you, can, uh, you get what you want to get out of that photo. And if you don't like your subject from a certain view, um, try using some other ones. Uh, you might take a picture of the Tower of the Americas in San Antonio, from the highway and then you might take another picture of it from up close and I'll show you what that might look like with an, another subject in the next photo. So this is a picture of the same uh, smokestack from an old factory up in New Hampshire uh, and on the left that is a photo of the smokestack from down at the very bottom uh, looking up and it kind of uses the whole leading lines but it doesn't really lead you to anywhere. Um, I'm not saying these are good photos by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not the best photographer on earth, but it kind of gives you an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, the photo on the right is the same smokestack taken from far away. So it's two same subject from two different angles create two completely different photos. Uh, another thing that we focus on is the depth of field of a photograph sometimes the background of your photo can take away from the subject like we talked about earlier you don't want the background in your photo to take away from whatever your subject is but other times you can use elements with, within the background to give your photo depth uh, to where it gives you something to look at because when we look at a photograph when we look at something with our eye we see it in 3d we see the layers that are created in nature if we're standing on a mountain and looking down towards the city, we see first the next mountain, and then maybe some trees, and then the city in the background, and it gives you a 3D picture. When we put that on film or on a computer, it flattens that photo out. It flattens out the, what we saw. So what we want to do to try to capture that 3D quality, that 3D element, is to put different uh, focal points at different points within the photo. You can put uh, objects in the foreground, the middle ground, the background. That way um, it kind of makes the illusion that the photo is in 3D. It's, and, and your eye is automatically going to look at that photo and see it like as if, they were look, if you were looking at it in person. Um, but it's completely up to you. It depends on um, whatever you would like to take that photo. So in this photo, we'll see that we're looking down over a valley and up, of course up at the front you see all the sheep and then the next layer you see a hill and then there's another hill about midway back and it kind of creates this this journey like if you were going to go through the hills 
this would be a whole lot better than just taking a picture of just the sheep and uh, the foreground. You wouldn't be able to see all the mountains that are in the background as well. So it's kind of a way of, of tricking the eye into seeing something that it is not really there. Another thing that we talk about in photography a lot is lighting. <laughs> and uh, I've never been good at, at figuring out how to um, use lighting to my advantage. Uh, but we have some photographers that are very good at that and I'm sure we'll um, explain that to you as we go further into workshops in the year. But proper lighting is uh, incredibly important to taking a good photograph. Um, if you have too much light, you can drown out your subject, as you can see on, with the picture on the left. Um, is there something in the background that we can't see? Well, who could tell? Because we've drowned it out because of the, the light exposure and contrast. Um, the photo on the right is the same photograph, only it is uh, is not light enough. Um, and so what we want to do is try to figure out a way to where our camera does not let in uh, either not enough light or too much light. And that's something we'll talk about as we go further into the year into other workshops um, when we can talk about that a little bit more in depth. Because there's a lot of different things that you can do with lighting to get some really cool effects. Uh, and this is what the photo uh, is actually supposed to look like. So you can see how much a photo can change um, just because of the lighting. You can also use lighting and contrast to change how your photo looks um, for different reasons. It doesn't have to ruin your photo, but uh, the photo on the right is the original photo of one of our former photographers here in the county. And the photo on the left, we played with the contrast just a little bit and uh, made it much more of a silhouette. So you can use lighting to your advantage sometimes as well. One question we get a lot about is digital photo quality. We got a lot of questions last year about when they started using, well maybe use something with a different number of megapixels. And uh, we've had digital cameras now, really popular digital cameras for about the last 10 to 15 years and uh, they're getting better every day. Uh, it used to be that if you took a picture on your cell phone um, it would not turn out very good. If you tried to print it out it wouldn't work. But they have cell phone cameras now that uh, have just as many megapixels as, a, uh, as any other kind of uh, digital camera you might buy at, at a store. But there's hundreds of different digital cameras out there and it's, sometimes it's really hard to tell which one you should pick. Um, but the quality and the definition or how sharp something looks of a digital photo is dependent on the number of pixels that can appear in that photo. Um, and a pixel, if you look at an at a old TV screen or a computer screen up close, a pixel are those small dots that you see um, that make up the picture on the screen. Um, the more pixels you have, the greater detail and the higher quality of the photos you have. So a camera with 14, 16, or 18 megapixels will take a much clearer high definition photo than a camera with four megapixels or one megapixel. The very first digital camera we ever had was a two megapixel camera. And if we tried to blow it up beyond a 3.5 or a three by five photograph, it did not look, it was all pixelated and it did not look good. So we used a lot of uh, film when we were growing up. However, um, nowadays we use a lot of, of digital cameras. Almost all of our photos that are turned in were taken digitally. Um, with that being said, just because you have a lower pixel camera doesn't mean you, can take, you can't take a prize winning photo. Uh, one of the best photos, or I guess the best photo I ever took was the one that I won a state contest with. And it was taken on a very simple disposable camera um, and it's not digital but a lot of people think that film cameras are inferior nowadays to the to a digital camera just because you have a maybe a lower quality camera digital or otherwise does not mean you can't take some really good photos with it photography is a form of art uh, and if you're able to uh, 
use your artistic qualities that you have and, and, and a vision that you have of what you want to express with that um, photograph, then you can take some really good photos. So choosing the right category um, for your photo. That's a big question we get a lot of the time and we'll get a lot of photos turned in and they'll be in one category and maybe they should have been in another. Um, so we have two photos on the screen and um, first we're going to talk about people. Uh, people photos are of any person, uh, any age, alone or in a group, active or not. It doesn't necessarily have to be a portrait. So the picture that you have hanging on the wall of your grandma or your son or whatever it might be, um, it doesn't have to, people person, a people photo does not have to be a portrait. On the left you see a, a photo of a little girl. Um, and this is a pretty good people photo because it focuses on her. She's not necessarily looking at the camera, but it kind of makes you wonder, well, what is she looking at? What is What, what else is going on that you can't see in the photo? Um, so it's an interesting photo. The photo on the right is a picture of another person, but you can't really tell what kind of photo it is. Is it focusing on the bicycle? Is it focusing on the person? Is it focusing more on the distorted effect that's within the photo? We don't really know. So when we want, when we take a, a people picture, we want to make sure that it focuses on the person and what they're doing, not on anything else in the background. We want to focus on the person. And one of the problems we run into with this is when we have a picture of um, a person and an animal together. Well, is it a people photo or is it an animal photo? You can enter it in the category that you intended the photo to take. Um, that is, you can if you took a picture of a person on the horse you, and you wanted it to be an animal photo, you could enter it as an animal photo. Just be aware that some judges may look at that and say, well, in their opinion, the subject is the person riding the horse. So you may get a comment on that. One of the issues we have with a photography project and photography contests is it's very subjective. Um, everybody has their own personal tastes as to what they want to see in a photograph. So uh, just because you enter a photo in one contest and get last place doesn't mean it will get last place at another contest. It depends on that judge for one day, just like any other contest, really. Animal photos, uh, we have two different types of animal photos. We have domestic animals and wildlife animals. Um, but the animal should be the focus of the photo. We sh really shouldn't have too much else in the photo. So the photo on the left is a, uh, a photo of a dog. And the photo on the right is a photo of a dog, but there's also my brother in the picture. Um, that would not be a good animal photo. Uh, you want it to... The, the, my brother's head's cut off, the dog's head is cut off. It's just an all around bad photograph. Um, so if you want to take a picture of an animal, uh, you can take it from different angles. And, and maybe that means it's just the animal's head or, or an, a detail of that animal. But you want to be able to know what kind of animal it is. And you, you want to try to take it as close as possible um, or from an interesting viewpoint. Another type of photo that we have, we call it, we used to call it still life, um, but these might fit into elements of design and macros and a couple other categories today. But these are photos where objects are prearranged um, or where composition does not naturally occur. One example of a still life photo today would be the food category. Uh, you're not going to walk around and find a plate of food or a cornucopia full of, of different fruits and vegetables in nature. It doesn't exist. It's not going to happen. Um, or maybe you uh, want to focus on a, um, a different spread of food or something close up like, a, like some grapes or something like that. Something that has a little bit of, of detail to it. You can set it up to where it's pleasing to the eye. Kind of what we would call like a magazine photo or a newspaper photo set up the photograph uh, to where your subject is um, pleasing to the eye and, and to where it, it is the focal point. So you can see um, on the photo, especially on the right, 
they wanted to focus on maybe that's a photo to focus on um, a story about traveling or hiking uh, so they put a, a map and, and a um, protractor and some pins and, and compasses together uh, to kind of focus on that um, it just depends on your again your creative eye what do you want to take the photo of but uh, still life it may come back in the photography contest someday but for now we have different areas where those uh, still life type photos go if you ever have a question about that please let me know um, another one natural landscape uh, scenic landscape scenes seas or seascapes underwater photos um, actually now underwater photos would go in marine the marine category but um, think of natural landscape photos as a broad picture of the world around you um, somebody might if there's a person standing on the photo of the dock uh, they might say well this is a people photo well you have the the really nice background you have the lake and the shadows cast by the mountains uh, the clouds and the little boat going along there it's a really good natural landscape same thing with the photo on the right uh, the boy is walking down the road that might be uh, better better suited in the people category um, but that's just an example of how I, w I would have entered that photo under a people category but this photo was actually entered through uh, a uh, the natural landscape category and it won so it, it completely depends on on how you want to enter it but also be aware that the judge may not agree with you plants and flora um, this is any photo that focuses on a plant or the plant structure you're not going to take a really big spread like we saw in the last photo of the um, of the trees and, and stuff on the sides of the road in the baseball photo the plant photo focuses on a group of flowers or a single flower or a fruit or vegetable or a, a tree from different angles a really w cool way that you can take a photo of a tree would be to get up right close to the trunk and look up the branches and see what kind of uh, what kind of uh, patterns appear in the the structure of the tree or taking some pictures of the bark itself there's some really cool things you can do with the plant and flora category um, but you can see the photo on the left is a cluster of flowers and it's trying to focus in on some of that detail it's not too too close to where you can still tell what it is but it's a decent picture of a bundle of flowers and on the right you also see some grapes but uh, uh, this is another category a lot of, everyone likes to take pictures of, of blue bonnets and flowers in the spring and this would be the category that you would enter those in uh, design elements or elements of design like we talked about earlier with the symmetry um, photos uh, these are photos to emphasize the structure more than the surroundings they can also emphasize uh, patterns and, and, and textures within um, something natural or man-made so you can see the photo on the left it kind of focuses on that old train uh, trellis bridge uh, and on the right you can it kind of focuses on some of those architectural elements that's in the old that old city uh, which looks like Waco to me but uh, when you're taking an elements of design it it could be any number of things if you have questions about that be sure to run it by your photography leader or or myself um, but elements of design are would also include any kind of architectural elements so if you took pictures of things on buildings or buildings from um, different and cool angles um, this would be the category that you want to enter in. digital excuse me digital darkroom is another category that we have in the forage photography contest and in this category this is a photo that has been altered or changed to give a different effect or enhanced effect to that photo with that said with the with all of the technology we have nowadays and being able to to alter photos on our phones you can alter the photo if maybe it, you hit the little auto correct th button on your phone or, or on the computer and it helps fix some of the, the lighting you can enter that photo and it's not would not be considered digital darker 
What digital darkroom is, is taking a photo and then using a, a kind of software to alter of how it looks, okay? Um, they can, it can occur while you're taking the photo or on a computer. This would be used by using things like Lightroom or Photoshop. For the contest, you also have to provide a copy if you're combining photos, like the photo on the top of the girl. That's three different photos combined. Um, and it creates a really cool effect. This is actually one of the state winning uh, photos taken by Sean Rydell um, from our county last year. But uh, it creates a really cool effect. It's a very uh, eye-catching photo. Um, but you have to include copies of what the original photos looked like. Um, and you put it to the back of your, of your um, photograph or if it's an online contest, there's other rules for that. Um, also, if you change a photo to black and white uh, or change it to a sepia tone or something like that, if you're taking a photo on Instagram, and you change the different tone through one of those filters, that would means that photo would go in digital dark. Um, but just because you crop something a little bit on your computer or uh, change the brightness a little bit on your computer, that's not going to be enough to make it be considered a digital darkroom photo. And there are people that have uh, an issue with this, especially if they used to take photos with a film camera, because you'd have to take 500 photos to get the 10 photos that you really liked but um, and so I get a lot of questions on that every year well you can tell this photo was altered or whatnot um, and it may have been but unless it was altered using one of these softwares to really alter the subject and um, and the colors and things like that within the photo um, or the, the entire photo itself colorize in different areas um, we would not consider one of those tweaked photos a digital darker photo. Details and macro are very close up. Uh, they're usually done with special settings and lenses. That way you can get real close to the photo and uh, really get uh, a close look at some of those those minute details that we may not see with our, our regular or with our eyes um, every day. Uh, so the photo on the right was taken with a, um, a macro lens and that's, uh, I don't really know what kind of plant it is, but the, you can see the details on the water droplets. The photo on the left is, uh, was taken using an iPhone and that was uh, some moss growing on a um, beam at the beach. So two good macro photos um, taken with two different kinds of cameras. Just because you have a camera that doesn't do something that, and it didn't cost $600, doesn't mean you can't take a good, a good photo in any one of these categories. Uh, the resources for this presentation were Texas 4-H Photography Curriculum. Uh, photos were provided by our former 4-Hers and by Mitchell Miranda, who's my brother and a trained photographer. Um, and also photographymad.com. If you ever have any questions about any kind of photographs, please let me know. Um, if I can't answer it, there are different specialists that can. We have some great 4-H families in this county that are very good at photography. Um, and I also know several photographers, including my brother, but, uh, but other ones, um, professors at A&M, which teach photography and we can answer any kind of questions that you may have. So thank you for listening to this presentation. Uh, I hope it didn't take up too much time. I hope you learned a little something from it. And we look forward to seeing y'all at some of our uh, photography events this year. We will have a photography uh, adventure again. We've gone to the beach the last couple of years, but we've talked about either doing the beach or maybe West Texas this year to go out to some, see some mountains. Uh, we will be taking a night photography trip to San Antonio in December. We will probably go and take pictures of the wildflowers when they bloom in the spring, along with several other things. A uh, trip to Lost Maples is also in the work to take pictures of the, the changing leaves in November. So stay tuned to your newsletter, to Facebook, uh, and to the, the, the yearbook. And we look forward to seeing you in 2015, 2016, for each year.